and welcome to Coffee and Cosmos with Robin. Today we're going to talk about what really happens when we die. So that'll be an interesting conversation and um, join in with your questions and comments. So again, this is Coffee and Cosmos with Robin. My name is Robin Fritz and I'm an intuitive and spiritual consultant and certified past life regression specialist uh, based in Seattle, Washington. And um, you know, one of the biggest things that we are concerned about is what happens when we die. So I'm going to touch on that today. Plus, we will do a healing with a crystal Fallon uh, and a crystal of the week and then uh, end with a healing with the goddess. But if there's anyone who would like a quick free reading along with this, please raise your hand, type it in the comments. Um, we are, as I've said before, still working on um, working with this platform here, Be Live TV, and so I'm thrilled to be here today. So again, thank you for joining me. Um, my name is Robin Fritz, and I'm delighted to be an Ohm Times expert and the host of the Ohm Times radio show, The Practical Intuitive, Mind, Body, Spirit for the Real World, and that airs every Monday at 2 Pacific Time, and then three times during the week, so you're welcome to check out those times or listen to the shows in the archives. But before we talk about um, the main subject today, which is what happens when we die, I'd like to start with a meditation with the Crystal Fallon. Fallon is an ancient power crystal, a healer and a truth bringer. And in this time together with us today, you will experience him however your intuition works most strongly. And as you do that today, um, and he's also with us on every radio show, but as you do that today, just think about um, the loved ones you have lost, um, human or animal, or someone you know who might be about to die, or if you're lucky and haven't experienced that yet, um, just think about what you might experience or what you think about or are concerned about feeling uh, or knowing about what happens when we die and just let those feelings surface and maybe clear them out so if you take your attention to the top of your head just take a deep breath and breathe in all healthy positive energy just feel that rushing straight through your body filling you up with healthy positive energy and as you exhale just release what doesn't serve and as you breathe in and exhale, let's take our attention to the tops of our heads with the crown chakra. And in this brief meditation, we're just combining body, mind, and spirit more tightly together with the power of this crystal. Starting at the high Jackie, take a deep breath and breathe down from the top of your head, down your face, your shoulders, your chest, your hips, your knees, and your feet the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. And as you do that, just feel your energy clearing out, your chakras clearing, and um, just feel that sense of getting settled deeper into your chair, relaxing, and connecting with your intuition and the energy of this crystal. And now imagine Fallon at your feet, this rotating gold light, as you see citrine Lemurian quartz, so, um, the backdrop of the room, you may, he looks more clear than anything. Just imagine him at your feet rotating this gold light outside your body. And as it moves up your body, past your knees, your hips, your chest, your shoulders, your face, your third eye, and your crown chakra. The crown chakra is going to just be wide open during this time with us today. And you can just feel that energy, know it's there. You might hear him talk with you. He's got quite the sense of humor. Or you may see a gold light or a gold man. And that's Fallon being with you today. So, again, thank you for joining me. And yesterday on my radio show, The Practical Intuitive, I talked about what really happens when we die. And, you know, here's a quick summary. And I'd like you to just put away everything you thought you knew about being dead and listen a little bit to my story. Because I work as a medium with my dad, Ray Fritz, 
who died on June 30th, 1994. You know, and when we lose our loved ones, we think, well, that's it. They're gone. Never going to hear from them again. Um, and by now we know that's not true. But what was interesting is that after his life review in the afterlife, my dad chose not to reincarnate, but to remain in the afterlife and help people who have newly um, entered the pro what I call their proper afterlife. So they have just arrived at a place like my dad has, what I call a way station for dead things on the other side. Now, I hope you laugh because, you know, it is kind of a cute phrase. And um, my intent in naming the things that I see in the afterlife in my work with my dad is first to, you know, lighten up the fear and the worry that we have about dying because, you know, none of us are getting out alive. But also to give you an idea of how the afterlife functions and the, the terms that I give them, I've cleared with the people in the afterlife. Is it okay for me to, you know, make a little joke about this and tell them how, how it works? And they're like, yes, please do. So um, a way station right here on our planet right now is a place where people can recuperate and rest up on their journey, a long journey sometimes. It's a place where they can take shelter in a storm. So a way station is a great description for what happens when we die and we move to the afterlife because we're tired and we need a place to rest and recuperate before we continue our journey in the afterlife. So that's literally why um, I call it a way station for dead things on the other side. So after our loved ones, hi, Maria. Oh, thanks. Thanks for joining me this week again. I appreciate that. And uh, again, I'd like a volunteer for a quick reading. Um, if you'd like, just type in your name and I'll take one or two people if we've got time. i um, love to do that with you. You're also welcome to tune into my radio show and, and um, ask me questions there or ask for a reading there or email me. Um, I'll give you that information at the end of the broadcast. But after our dead have rested up at a way station, they could be humans, it could be animals, it could be anything that's died. Hi, thanks for joining us. Patricia, great reading. So Patricia, tell me what you would like, um, like me to look at for you, and I'll jot a note down here as I'm chatting about the afterlife. Okay, so Patricia and Don, that's it. That's all I can handle today is two people. And thanks so much. Um, for volunteering. So type in your question, please, and we'll see if it pops up here on this great platform I'm learning how to use. So at any rate, so after people have rested up or animals have rested up at a way station, um, Maria, tune in next week or send me a need, and Teresa, also tune in next week, or you're both welcome to send me a note here on Facebook at my business page, The Practical Intuitive Robin and Fritz. Tell me what you're interested, what you'd like me to look at, and I'll cover it on my radio show on Monday for sure. And um, maybe we can also dig into it next Tuesday at our Facebook Live. So Patricia and Don, please uh, type in a question that you'd like. Relatives and family, animal family that have passed. That's, that's a little bit more involved than I can handle in a really quick thing. Um, but um, I can give you, you know, some quick information on that um, and all the others that have volunteered. I'm so happy. Does your son look in on his kids? Oh my gosh. I'm sorry you lost your son. And all of the others, Patricia, who aren't Patricia and Don, please send me a note on Facebook and I'll look at that on my radio show next week. Um, there, the show stay in the archive, so you're welcome to listen there. And I can cover it a little bit more there than I can here since, you know, we um, need to stick to under half an hour here. Um, let me tell you a little bit here, and I think both Patricia and Dawn are going to feel a lot better when they hear what I have to say about the afterlife here. So after they move beyond the way stations, they go for their life review, look at what they did during their life, what they intended to do when they set out, what they accomplished, what they would like to do better next time. 
and then they go and do whatever they decide to do next. Sometimes they vacation in the afterlife. Um, they do all kinds of things. They can travel the universe. They can go to places on the planet that they'd like to visit. Um, I know one family in the afterlife that spends their time on the beach in Hawaii drinking Mai Tais, which is awesome. And it turns out that's what they love to do in, in their bodies when they were here. So it can give you an idea of, you know, what our loved ones are up to. Do they check in on us? Absolutely. So Dawn and Patricia, um, all of you should know that your loved ones, once they're rested up, they get a chance to check in on, on you. And in my upcoming book, um, I'm covering um, how we do that and how we can connect to them on our own. And it's also in the webinar that's up at the Experts platform. Um, and I'll tell you about that in a minute, too. But I want to tell you something that I learned from my dad, um, because there's so much to do in the afterlife. It just boggles our mind. And I know, you know, it's really hard to lose our loved ones. I was nine years old when my brother died. Okay, so... I've lived my whole life losing people and animals, so I know exactly how you're feeling. Um, I know exactly the worry um, when you see your loved ones failing. Kelly, hi, I am doing great. Thanks for asking, and I hope you are too. But here I had this amazing opportunity to work with my dad. He literally came forward. Your dad was very loud after his passing. He was like, like, hello, everybody. Like, here I am drinking beer in the afterlife. That kind of loud because they do that, too. <laughs> I, hope, I hope you enjoyed his conversations, Patricia. That is very cute. Um, so, uh, okay. So I work with my dad as a medium because he asked me to, you know. And I was like, hmm, why would I want to do that? You know, because there are a lot of people working as mediums. But my dad had some specific goals in mind. And I'll cover those in upcoming broadcasts as, as I'm realizing there's a lot to talk about the dead. And I have a week every week on my radio show to talk about all kinds of things. And we'll go into it. But here I had my dad, right? And I thought, okay, cut to the chase, Robin. Find out something. So I said, Dad, what's the number one thing you want people to know about being dead? What's the number one thing you want us to know about being dead? And my dad laughed and he said, it's a party. <laughs> you know, I was so startled, I burst out laughing and I was delighted, right? And Patricia and Dawn, you've lost loved ones. Dawn, your son, which is horrible, I know. But imagine, they're having fun in the afterlife. And it's the same thing my dog Murphy said to me, how much fun they have in the afterlife. They play, they joke, they goof off. And here's the thing. They are thinking about us, and they miss us as much as we miss them. But, oh, my gosh, they are having the best time. <laughs> yes, you can count on it, Kitley. So here I want to read something to you um, because my dad got serious after he laughed and said it's a party. And, you know, that's the title of my upcoming book, Getting to the After Party, What Really Happens When We Die. Um, and I want to read this because, you know, I recorded the conversation that I had with my dad, or at least, you know, what I was talking back and forth and repeating what he was saying. And um, so here's his quote. He said, what I want people to know about being dead is that there's more, a lot more than you could ever imagine or will imagine when you're inside of a body. It's further than you could ever go, which is for obvious reasons why you need your body to stop so your soul can go on. I didn't know it when I was in a body, and this is the most important thing I would think for somebody who is alive to know. So here's my dad getting very serious about being in the afterlife. And remember, his job is to support people and animals who have died. And because I work with multidimensional beings, my dad's way station in the afterlife looks a lot different than his friend's way stations do um, because beings that we just don't even know exist also go there. But um, because I, uh, Kelly, I can only see part of your question. I often wonder about what do you feel if someone and this is what I'm working with the Be Live people on because I cannot see comments or whole comments. 
And we're working on that. Um, I guess I got caught in the technological shuffle. Just leave it to Robin to have those issues. Um, so I can't see your whole question. But do please uh, Facebook Messenger me, and um, I will bring that up on my radio show, uh, what, your, what your comment was there. And I'm sorry. I don't know why I can only see part of the comments. But, you know, here's my dad getting very serious. What if they took their own life? Another subject entirely, Kelly. It happens all the time. And that's one reason why I help the dead. And it really depends. Um, some of these people are too upset about what they've done to actually go to the afterlife. And um, I'm trying to think, uh, oh, actually, Kelly, my radio show next week, the whole hour is on what I call the stuck dead. And they're not necessarily people who have killed themselves. They're people who just don't love themselves enough to trust that the afterlife is real and they're okay. And sometimes suicides don't go to the afterlife until they can forgive themselves or until their family members can forgive themselves. And sometimes they get to the afterlife and they go, oh my gosh, that was a mistake. And um, then, they, then they can move on. But a lot of times they come to people like me for help. And I will talk about, it's a very involved subject. And I am talking about that on Monday. Um, so join me at two o'clock Pacific time. But, you know, I hope this brings everyone some comfort because really the afterlife is an amazing place and we all get to experience it at some point, but it's hard. Yes, Patricia, you are an empath and you feel things differently and you will feel the feelings and uh, i'm actually offering a multi-part webinar series starting in january probably mid-january to get people recovering from the holidays um, because i've taught energy boundaries and you know practical ways to use our intuition at universities for healthcare professionals and the biggest problem people have is energy boundaries they, even in working with your own deceased family members. So there's a way to be an empath without being overwhelmed. And I will be teaching that as a series of webinars. So um, that's kind of what I wanted to talk about today was um, just that when we die, we go to a way station. Patricia, you're so, you're so welcome. Thank you for volunteering. And I apologize to not be able to read the comments here. Um, but if I don't use this program, I can't use Facebook Live at all because although I live in Seattle, I'm in the black hole of communications down here um, on the beach. Our loved ones do visit us when they pass. And here's the thing, it, Vina, I hope that I'm pronouncing it correctly. If you're trying to talk Yes, and it isn't always consistent, and they're not always there talking with us, because believe it or not, there's so much to do in the afterlife. They do move on in their own way, just as we move on. Tell her you miss her yourself, Marianne. You can do that. I mean, just say, Mom, I miss you. I love you. And that's the whole point, right? And if you're an empath, you might not hear them talking to you, so you might feel them or you might hear them talk, or you might see them if you're clairvoyant. And you can go over to my business page because I'm doing a short series on, on the different intuitive abilities. And today I'm talking about clear hearing. And um, Kelly, I don't even see your comment there. So um, yes, Marianne too. And here's the thing. So if you, um, set a time to talk to your loved ones Set like 10 minutes a day like patricia how is your grandfather casey how do you feel he is take a deep breath because you're here in this energy with um fal and the crystal and how does he feel to you you know and sometimes if your intuition works towards knowing clear knowing then you're just going to you know in a sense, be winging it because clear knowing is really difficult. That's my most powerful um, intuitive ability. And while I have all the others and I talk with things a lot, um, I know things. So in a session with people, I'll just hear the answers and it'll be an answer, but I'll 
it's, I just know that it's there. So you may be connecting with your grandfather on this knowing thing. And so then you just have to believe that you're connected. But if you set a time every week, say 10 minutes once a week, invite your spiritual team to come in to monitor and to keep you your energies clear, um, eventually you're going to feel that you've had a connection with your loved ones. And um, I talk about this in my book, and I talked about this on my webinar, Resolving Grief and Connecting with Our Dead. So you can find out that whole process on that hour-long webinar at the Experts platform. But we are running out of time today, and I did want to cover um, a crystal of the week. And for this week, I chose amethyst. Now you can see behind me on the top shelf in between the lav uh, lavender, that's a amethyst geode that's broken into three pieces. And oh, that's, here's a smaller piece of amethyst. Now you're probably all familiar with amethyst. It's a pretty common crystal. It's often used, well, used for protection in the old days, so to speak. But um, I don't use amethyst in my healing practice because it's a very soft stone. <laughs> Pride? No, I don't know where you put your wedding dress. <laughs> um, feels like it's buried under something. I would look at the very bottom of a trunk. Um, okay, so amethyst. Amethyst is great if you're suffering from grief or someone is about to die. Yes, your soul does, Shannon, that's good. That's what is called your life review. Your soul does go off to a life review after they've rested up at a place like my dad's way station. And they look at their lives. Now, we all come into this life with a job that we plan to do. And the problem with humans is we forget it, you know, and we spend our lives going, like, what am I supposed to do? Well, you know what? On a very broad sense, we're all here to grow our souls. And that could be anything. So never devalue the work that you're doing. Oh my gosh, I could not be a carpenter for anything. In fact, I just got a cat tree and it took the entire neighborhood to take it apart and put it back together correctly because I did not put it together correctly, even with the directions right in front of me. So that's not my skill set. And there's no way that I could be a grocery clerk because I couldn't keep all those codes in my head. So everybody has a job to do doesn't matter how ordinary your daily job is. Your job is to be the best you can be at what you're doing, to grow your soul, to attend broadcasts like this. Own Times has created this remarkable community for you to grow and develop in. And so you're here to grow your soul and find the ways that do that for you. Life is not always easy, but it is always worthwhile. And I can say that as someone who lost everything through illness and disability, lost everything, couldn't work for 15 years, and here I am back working, making my contribution to the world, I hope, and helping other people learn that we are all intuitives and healers together. So there you go. Shannon, you don't pay for what you did in, in another lifetime. You don't. That uh, The whole idea of karma is completely and totally wrong. And thanks for bringing that up. And I'm going to cover that too in other shows coming up. But finally, let me finish on the amethyst. Amethyst is good for helping deal with loss and deal with emotions. And it's great to have around when someone is dying. Just remember, amethyst is a very... Thank you, Patricia. I appreciate you being on these broadcasts with me. Amethyst is a very sensitive stone, so you might want to bolster it with something like black tourmaline or my favorite clearing quartz. Um, or grounding is columbite, but kyanite is also good. But, um, you know, consider amethyst um, if you're grieving and um, maybe have it by your bed when you're sleeping at night. So as we're getting ready to end for the day, um, I'd like to call your attention to the webinars that I have up at um, the Learn It Live platform with Ohm Times. Go to experts dot ometimes.com slash Robin Fritz and it's R-O-B-Y-N-F-R-I-T-Z and you'll see the webinars I have up there. One is Resolving Grief and Connecting with Your Dead. So it's an hour webinar that answers in a lot more detail what I talked about today and it also gives you a ritual and a meditation 
for connecting with your dead. It's up. You can view it anytime. Oh, Patricia, that is so nice. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. You can't know how much I appreciate it. Well, yes, you can because you're an empath. But thank you. I really appreciate that. So I um, have, again, as I said earlier, a series of webinars on managing our energy boundaries. The number one most important thing out there for us in our daily lives is keeping our energy to ourselves while also being able to explore the world around us. And that's a really big subject, no matter what work you're doing, but especially if you're working as a healer, if you're working in the healthcare field, if you're out there in business or politics, wow, you really need that. So um, I will have more information on that coming up. But on Tuesday, November 7th, we're all going to have fun together at 2 Pacific time. Oh, Marianne, thank you. How nice. I love you guys. You're so awesome. Thank you. You just made my day. So join me on Tuesday, November 7th at, what did I say, 2 Pacific time for a free webinar. I'm calling it The Multiverse is Real. Thank you, Jean. Um, thanks. I, Gianna? Oh, I love that name. Um, the multiverse is real. There are multiple Earth dimensions. There are multiple universe dimensions. And sometimes what we call aliens are really beings from different dimensions, as they've explained to me. But also there are mythological beings that are actually real. And so if you're interested in being what I call an intuitive explorer, you know, like an armchair explorer, um, this is the webinar for you um, because I've had multiple beings ask me to be their ambassador and I'm like, uh, okay. And really my job is just to introduce them to people who want to get to know other cultures and other beings. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Pamela. Awesome. Thank you so much. What does it look like to you? What color is it? Um, so that webinar is a lot of fun. We'll talk about things that seem really out there. And then, you know, if you're interested in exploring, it'll, it'll come through to you. And I've heard the most amazing things from people who get to go and explore other beings and other cultures after attending a webinar like that. So we'll have lots of fun Tuesday, November 7th. And then just because, you know, we also want to really get a practical handle on our intuition on Thursday, November 16th at 4. Thank you so much, Victoria. And everyone appreciates that. Love to all of us. That's awesome. Uh, Thursday, November 16th at 4 Pacific time, using intuition in business. Sandy, thank you. Thank you. Tune into my radio show. Um, we're going to get practical and learn about how to use intuition in our daily work. Whether you work in a cubicle, whether you're an entrepreneur, whatever you're doing, intuition is your backup. You know, it's your right-hand person. So join me for that. It's experts.ometimes.com slash Robin Fritz. And there's a number of webinars already up and some coming up. So before we end with the healing, I want to thank, oh, turquoise like this, right? Thank you. I'd like to end, um, Teresa, um, I hope you consider joining our series of webinars and do turn into the radio show. Um, we're really out of time here. So um, we're going to end with a healing with the goddess to get us grounded back down. Um, I'm trying. Thank you, Pamela. Um, if you're enjoying this broadcast, please like the Ohm Times Institute page, the Ohm Times Magazine page, my own business page, Rob, uh, the Practical Intuitive Robin M. Fritz, and all of the Ohm Times um, offerings out there. They have a beautiful magazine. We all have a radio show. There's just the experts platform. Um, support us so that we can support you. Thank you so much, Karen. And go to my website, robinfritz.com. Um, you can sign up for webinars. You can see some of the videos there. I'm also on YouTube. But my services, I offer personal and business intuition, animal communication, mediumship, obviously, space clearing, and past life and between life regression, which is awesome. Soul clearing, soul healing, spiritual awakenings, uh, and energy healing. It's all there to help you be the best that you can be. And so as we end today, Let's clear us out energetically. Let's get us back and grounded into our bodies. Close down that crown chakra, which happens when you're dealing with Fallon. And know that you have healing energy in your palms, 
So palms on your heart, breathe into your palms, and just offer that energy out to wherever it wants to go. It's aware and it knows what it's doing. Yeah, past life regression is just awesome. I am so thrilled to see these beautiful souls, not just resolving traumas, but tapping past life skills. Thank you, Karen. Thank you so much and sending it back to you. And now hands on your heart. Breathe in. You're not channeling energy. You're just breathing it in. Breathe into your palms and put that back in your heart and just feel yourself getting grounded back into your body. All that energy. And you can do this anytime during the day uh, when you need a boost. First thing in the morning and last thing at night too. Thank you so much for joining me today. I look forward to joining you next week at this time. And take care and please send me notes um, what you'd like to talk about or questions you have that I didn't cover today. And certainly questions for uh, my radio show, um, for readings that I do on my radio show or just a call and comment. Thank you. Take care. See you next week.